Hey everyone, thanks for checking out part 2 of my Sega Master System retrospective. Uh, another year of not so many releases, but quite a few games worth talking about, a lot more than last year anyway. There were 23 releases in 1987 for the Sega Master System, over in North America anyway. I don't think there were so many more yet over in Europe and Japan. There's only a couple notable games from over there that I might cover more in depth in the future. But for now I'm just going to go through the stuff that came out this year here. Because there weren't that many, I'm going to cover everything. I'll cover the more notable stuff up front, but yeah, I might as well just go through everything since it's not that long. Like other things around this time, we don't have firm release dates on this stuff, so I'm not going to do it completely chronologically like I usually do. I just broke it up into different categories, so I'll just go through it that way. Yeah, let's just get right into it. The first game I want to talk about, and one of the most notable for the year, is a Fantasy Zone 2, The Tears of Opa Opa. What makes it such an interesting game is that it's a direct sequel to the arcade classic that was made specifically for the Master System, though it was ported to arcades later. The game takes place 10 years after the original game, and Opa Opa must fend off another invasion. Gameplay is pretty much the same as the Defender-inspired Cutem Up first game. The biggest addition here is that each level now has three zones. You need to clear them by warping between them. Opa Opa also now has a life bar, so you can take several hits before losing a life. The game features 8 levels and bosses, and a couple new power-ups. There's also secret shops and items that can be found by shooting to reveal them. After that, another contender for the most notable game of the year, uh, that is Zillion, and which may actually be one of the most notable games on the system. This game is often called the Master Systems Metroid, though it's not at all a direct copycat of a game like some of the other Master System titles. Zillion has an interesting history being produced alongside the Tatsunoku anime series, which despite being practically unknown over here, has some really surprising facts about it worth looking up if you're interested in anime. That anime went for 31 episodes and even featured cameos by Fantasy's own star Opa Opa, and the guns in the series were designed to match the light phaser for the Master System. In the anime, three teens armed with special guns make up the White Knights, a task force who fights back against the Nozas and their leader, Empress Admis who's trying to kill all the humans to repopulate planet Maris for her own race. The game sees the anime star JJ infiltrate and knows a base on planet X to destroy it. The goal is to find five discs which will be used to set the base's self-destruct system. While exploring the underground base you'll find power-ups, mechanisms, and codes which open up new areas, and you can rescue your captive friends Apple and Champ who become playable characters and have their own strengths, weaknesses, and power-ups. The game is a blast like those action platform, not quite linear titles, like Metroid, so definitely worth checking out if you've never heard of it before. Following that is Gangster Town, a light gun shooter with distinct stages set in the 1920s. You play an FBI agent, taking on gangsters through seven different levels filled with enemies and civilians. There's also two bonus rounds where you have to shoot bricks out of a wall to find a key within the time limit. The next exclusive is Kung Fu Kid. Apparently a follow-up to the Sega SG-1000 title, Dragon Wang, Kung Fu Kid is a martial arts platformer that kind of feels like NES's Kung Fu, but with high floaty jumps and more complex level design. The game stars the Chinese martial artist Wang, who sets out to fight the evil Madanda, who's woken up after a thousand years of sleep and attacks the village. You move through a stage, taking out your enemies that come from in front and behind you with your attacks. You can also duck, jump, and pick up talismans that can be thrown to take out normal enemies. Each of the six stages end with a boss fight. Then kind of a multi-platform title, a Ghostbusters. This is a version of the game that was also released on the 2600 NES and various home computers, but by far this is the best version of that game. The original game was designed by David Crane, and it gets a lot of flack for some of its design choices. Uh, this one still has a bit of that, but it's really been streamlined. Like the other versions of the game, you purchase your equipment and upgrades for your team and vehicle, go to different buildings to capture ghosts, and eventually fight the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, climb the Shandor, and take out Zool. Just about everything is improved from the previous versions. Most importantly, your driving no longer uses fuel. Overall though, the game structure is still a bit cryptic, so read the manual if you're going to get into this, but definitely worth checking out over the other versions. And that brings us to the big peripheral of the year, the Sega 3D Glasses. This is a really cool thing that a lot of people didn't know about. You have the glasses themselves, which are kind of hard to see, but I'm not taking them out of here because they're practically new. And uh, yeah, 
the adapter which the glasses plug into and this plugs into the card slot on the older Master Systems. So these are the 3D glasses that were released to play Sega Scope 3D games. Unlike a few NES games that included your old school red and blue glasses, these are hardware based with shutters that open and close so quickly that it provides a 3D effect when the screen is set up to show that. Some games are designed to do that. They look really blurry. You'll see in the videos I show upcoming, they look really blurry when uh, you're not using the glasses. But yeah, with the glasses, it makes them have a 3D effect. So these are a lot more like a primitive version of the glasses that modern 3D TVs use. It's worth noting that these don't really work on a CRT. The refresh rates of the TV doesn't match up with the shutters. So it's you need an old TV to check these out right now. But some things are in the work for different clone consoles and stuff that may change that in the future. There were eight games released total for these. Six were released in North America, and it's worth noting that these glasses were designed by Mark Cerny, who is the lead architect at PlayStation right now and did a bunch of work on different PlayStation consoles and also worked on some of the 3D titles that we're gonna be talking about. This year, three 3D games were released in North America, the first of which is Maze Hunter 3D. It's a cooler game than the generic name implies, Maze Hunter 3D is a top-down action title where you move through a stage taking out enemies and switching between different perspective layers, which changes the scale of your character and provides a unique 3D effect kinda like Zelda Link Between Worlds would eventually do. The game features five worlds with four areas each. Then we got Missile Defense 3D, a light gun shooter where you take out missiles with the Sega Phaser. The game includes several locations, switching between the eastern and western cities, which are under attack from bases firing missiles at them. You have a couple screens to shoot down the missiles before they take your target city out. Overall, not too great a game, but the 3D effect of the missiles coming at you is pretty neat. And lastly is Zaxxon 3D, a home version of the isometric arcade shoot-em-up, but the Master System version features a behind-the-ship viewpoint and has you flying into enemy bases in nine different levels taking out enemies. You have to level your ship with the enemies to attack them and avoid different obstacles, which the 3D really helps with. Unlike some of the other 3D games though, you can also choose to play this in 2D mode. Which brings us to the arcade conversion section of the video where I'm gonna talk about all of the games that were originally arcade games and got versions released on the Sega Master System, starting with the next game I have in my collection, and I think the most notable uh, for my reasons anyway, uh, Wonder Boy. This game was better known over here for its NES version, Adventure Island, though recently maybe Wonder Boy has really pulled ahead in terms of, uh, you know, just people knowing it. The original Wonder Boy is actually very similar to the original Adventure Island 1, because later each series goes in its own direction. Uh, the game is a side-scrolling platformer that was often compared to Mario back in the day, it stars Tom Tom, whose girlfriend Tanya is kidnapped, so he sets off through 10 stages to get her back. Each stage includes four rounds with four checkpoints and a boss fight. Each stage also has four dolls to collect. In order to get to the last level and get the ending, you have to find every doll in the game, which I don't believe was in Adventure Island, so that's a bit of a different thing if you're used to playing that version. Next is Enduro Racer, a home conversion of the arcade dirt bike racing game. This game features 10 stages, which is double the arcade version. In each stage, you have to reach the goal before you run out of time. Other vehicles and obstacles are on the tracks, which must be avoided. If you take enough damage, you won't die, but the timer will start to count down twice as fast. Courses also include jumps, and doing a wheelie just as you hit a jump will give you a speed boost, which is important to get through the later levels. Next is Global Defense, which was known as SDI in Japan. This arcade home conversion has you protecting the planet from missile attacks over 20 stages. The game features five different settings with offensive and defensive waves. In both phases, you move your satellite around and you move a cursor to aim your shots. If you manage to stop everything during the offensive wave, you get to skip the defensive wave. But if you don't, then you have a second chance to shoot down the missiles before they blow up the base you're protecting. There's three power-ups that increase your speed, attack radius, and restore health. This is a really interesting use of controls. Um, you know, obviously there's not enough here to be a twin stick shooter, but you can see that was kind of the influence here. The controls here take a bit to get used to, but the game becomes a really interesting mix of a twin stick shooter and something like Missile Command. Next up with Quartet, a scaled back home conversion of the four player side-scrolling action arcade game. 
The Master System version has a one and two player mode where you shoot your way through six different levels, each with its own boss. The main power up here is a jetpack that lets you fly around. Next up, some popular conversions, which for the time were really cool to have on home consoles, but now there's just so many other ways to play them. Uh, first is Outrun, the popular driving game that features branching routes for a total of 15 stages. You have to complete five stages to reach one of the five goals, depending on which routes you took, which was a pretty unique concept at the time, giving players a good reason to play through it a bunch. Then Space Harrier, which was a completely different kind of shoot 'em up that takes place in the same universe as Fantasy Zone. The game stars the Harrier, a flying soldier who travels through 18 colorful stages, taking out strange enemies and huge bosses. You used a unique behind the back perspective as the character flies forward into the screen, shooting and avoiding enemies and obstacles. You can also run along the ground, which was a nice touch. Now we get into the sports section, uh, starting with Rocky. Sega's Rocky game puts Rocky up against his opponents from the first four movies. The game has three fights, which have you taking on Apollo Creed, Clubber Lang, and Ivan Drago. Before each fight is a training exercise minigame, where depending on how well you do, improves Rocky's stats for the upcoming fight. During fights you can move, duck, guard your face and body, and throw three types of punches. Then another light gun shooter with Shooting Gallery. This game has 24 rounds and 5 different stage types. In each stage you have to shoot the specified number of targets before they leave the screen. Each stage type has its own minor variations on gameplay with targets including ducks, balloons, spaceships, balls, and televisions. Then we get into the great sports series, a whole bunch more of these. We got a great baseball game. There was great basketball. Great golf. Great Soccer, which was also released as uh, World Soccer and Sports Pad Soccer in other regions. Great Volleyball. Great football. And I just want to mention uh, the Sports Pad Pro again and Great Ice Hockey, which I mentioned in last year's video, but now I'm not so sure. They may have came out this year. And we also got Sports Pad Football which is the exact same as great football but use the sports pad controller i think that and ice hockey may have been the only games released over here uh, to use that controller but maybe i'll learn about some more in upcoming videos and that's it for my sega master system 1987 retrospective and thanks for checking out this video i hope you learned about some cool games worth checking out these three for sure if you haven't uh you know that's my kind of personal picks for my collection as i've curated stuff down those are the three i kept um but yeah tons of interesting games for this console we'll get to and you know check out my other retrospectives i'm still working on my nes series ps1 uh, catching up with a lot of modern stuff so yeah stay subscribed for that stuff and i'll see you guys later bye